and I could see it working actually um, in so many spaces like oh, that's such a gorgeous font. Hi everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel I'm Joanita and today I just want to talk a bit about my plant decluttering. Um, over the last couple of weeks I've just been going through my plant collection and really deciding whether or not the plants are actually still giving me joy and because whenever I find joy in the plants, I give joy to the plants so then I'm taking care of them a bit more and looking through my collection and I've been sort of letting go of a few plants that may not bring me as much joy as they used to and I'm talking about maybe a few years or so or even a few months even if it if you just bought the plant. Um, there are a couple of plants that have been on my mind not because they don't bring me joy but because I think about them a bit too much and usually I don't like to think about my plants constantly if that makes sense like I want them to exist and then I exist and we just coexist <laughs> and just chill but if I find the plants always on my mind like the first thing I wake up I'm worrying about gosh do I really want to keep this plant or um, you know it's such a good plant but if there's always a but and I'm always thinking about it then it's something that tells me that it's not quite connected to me anymore. This is a good exercise to try. So if you're having problems with your plants, if you feel overwhelmed, just give yourself, without judgment, it's not like you're getting rid of them there and then, just without judgment, put the ones aside that are giving you problems, whether it's in the care or whether it's something that's always on your mind or getting you down, whether it looks a certain way and you're not quite sure, whatever that niggling feeling is, just put them aside and that's what we're doing now. So the first one for me, is the Calathea angela. Um, again, all the plants you'll see, there's absolutely nothing wrong with them. They have no bugs, they're healthy, um, and some of them are even thriving. So it's not about, oh, you know, the plant's not doing well and I'm getting rid of it. It's more a connection in terms of how I'm feeling about it this time. So the first one, as I said, is the Calathea angela. Um, the next one here is the Calico, um, Beherensis, and if any of you follow me on Instagram, you'd know I only just recently got this plant, and it was actually a wish list plant. So um, it's on this it's on this list because I think I could have waited a bit longer for exactly the the one I wanted, and I did want this plant. Don't get me wrong, but what I did want is a bigger version. It seems to be a slow grower, in at least in my care. So. That's why that's the, those are the things that have been going on in my in my mind whenever I see this plant. Again, beautiful plant. I know for sure that if I if I do get rid of this, I would definitely still have it um, in my collection. I believe. Next one is a bit of a surprise, and this is the Calathea zebrina. It's a surprise because ugh, this is such a beautiful plant. Um, Together with my Calathea wasawisii, those two velvety type leaves I really adore and even looking at it now I'm just like oh my gosh, <laughs> I love you. But um, the problem with that one, it doesn't have a problem but it's always on my mind because of the level of moisture that it needs and so um, this is one of the ones that every day I'm misting which is another thing to think about whenever you wake up. Um, so just things like that, it's just something that's been on my mind and one, maybe too many. And I'll tell you right now, my Calathea, my Calathea Wasawisia is not on this list. So um, yeah, it's, I mean, look at it, it's a beautiful plant. So we'll see. Next is the good old Monstera Deliciosa. And this was a cutting I took. The plant I got was just in such bad shape. So I managed to rescue the, you know, this cutting out of it. And as you can see, um, and I'll put shots later on, there, there is growth happening. So like I said, these plants are all healthy. Um, but with Monstera, the thing that's going on in my mind is that um, I do want a Monstera deliciosa, but I want a huge one. <laughs> and I, I was thinking, you know, in my mind I kept it because it is a decent size. So that's why that goes on the table. Um, and the Maranta Lucinora, love, this plant is so lovely, like it grows so fast. I mean, I think I propagated it once by just cutting and sticking it back into the soil, or cutting it, leaving it in water, sticking it back into the soil. It just grows so quickly and it's just, it's just so lovely. Like, this is what I mean, 
these plants i do adore them and i think you might find the same there are plants that you adore and then you think like are so beautiful but it's always like a niggling thing about about those plants um so i can still appreciate how beautiful and gorgeous they are and just i appreciate how they grow but if there's something for me if there's something that's not quite right it doesn't have to just be with, be with plants then it's usually not right so anyway the lucinora is there and the next one i've got the, again the maranta oh my gosh even looking at it now like it's just it's such i tried to get rid of this plant so many times and each time i would it would just stay because there's just something about it that every time i look at it and i'm getting to, going trying to get rid of it it just it just pulls me back in i don't know what it is and again just looking at it even now i'm just like wow another calathea there's a theme here but might not be what you think okay um this is the calathea surprise star and again this i have to say if you want an easy calathea in in my in my opinion a, a few of the ones that i have are, i consider quite easy but the surprise star is super it's so simple like she really just stays I water her when I water her like uh, three or four days or whatever I'll insert the video of my Calathea care and and she's just it's super easy like you can just leave her in her spot in her shaded spot and she's just like cool no fuss don't get any gnats with her well maybe I think I had like one or two but no it's just she's just so chill anyway the next one here is white star <laughs> This is another one that over the past like few weeks and um, even when I first got it, like I've really been considering losing, like letting go of it. And each time, again, each time I go, there, I don't know if it's something about these stripes. Um, I go to it and it's it's a beautiful plant, and I can see it working actually um, in so many spaces. Like oh, that's such a gorgeous plant. And here is a philodendron. And this is the uh, Rojo Congo. It's a lot bigger than when I started. When I started, it was like two small plants that I put together because I had the intention of growing a huge plant. So that one is a surprise for me actually, because I didn't think it would be on the list, but I've just been really like, um, like cutthroat about how I want my peace of mind to be. And if any of the plants have been giving me any kind of niggling feeling, I'm putting them on the table. So this is what I mean. It's not to say that you're getting rid of them. You're just putting them on the table to evaluate. <laughs> um, okay, so that I think that's all the collection. So we have mostly mostly Calathea and Maranta, and then you know a couple of philodendrons. And this is just like a close up, just to show that you know your plants don't have to be dying and almost dead for you to feel like you need to let go and i'm here showing the zebrina in such good <laughs> condition oh my gosh um you know all of them have new growth you can see one crispy leaf up there at the bottom of the surprise star but that's like an, a really old leaf again the rojo congo just looking amazing lots this one i get a new leaf every week like as soon as the other one pops open another one's next oh gosh the maranta i mean look how gorgeous and especially in the night like there's something about the nighttime that brings out all these colors angela again i love the pink around her and then up to the monstera yeah, here i'm showing you sorry my, i'm looking down on the screen i'm showing you like the baby um, of it so it is growing even in water and you know nice healthy plant no brown tips loving its life and i think that's what makes it a bit difficult when you have plants that are enjoying themselves in your home oh my gosh and the lucinora i keep going <laughs> there is the green one it's just such, the, such a pretty plant and and again the uh, kalankoe beautiful plant the herensis um so lovely like i like the ice bluish green of it so mm, love it love the the lucinora like i can't tell you enough how quickly that grows if you're looking for calathea to give you like instant satisfaction in terms of your growing as long as you're giving it the right um the like right conditions fine and by the way these don't have humidifiers the calathea that you see haven't had humidifiers on them so the condition 
doesn't have to be all the time humid if you're looking to get into um, calathea. Um, but then again, I'm in the UK and again, one can argue that it might be a bit more humid than another, possibly maybe a dry state in America or something. Okay, and yeah, the, um, the, the white star looking just majestic. I mean, it's so, all these plants, beautiful. Okay, so that's my collection of the ones that have been on my mind um, for one reason or another. And there are mostly Calathea on this list just because they're the ones that require the most attention from me and so they're mostly on my mind a lot. Um, and again, all it has to do is with moisture. But I must also say, having Calathea around, I've had an increase of um, gnats. Now, I don't have a lot of gnats, it's not to the extent that I need anything to like um, battle them. Um, but um, coming from having no gnats to some gnats, it's like, oh my gosh, because of this, you know, keeping the, the, the soil moist business. So it's not out of control, but I do enjoy um, just being free of little things flying about. <laughs> so, um, so that's why most of those are on the table, but I can already tell you that I, there are on, some of these on here, I just, I really love and you get to see which ones I get rid of. So, oh my gosh, the striped Maranta lucinora, the red striped one. So that, that, I let go of that one. Um, Calathea Angela, I let go of. Now Calathea Angela, Rosie picked her Angela. I let go of her because she was a bit of a, like she was she was growing okay but she wasn't i don't know i just didn't feel a connection and it sounds so weird and if maybe you're out there thinking to yourself oh this plant is doing so well but i can't there's something about it i just don't know give yourself grace like the whole like in my perspective the whole idea of bringing plants into your home it's it's to have this joyful experience in exchange so if i don't feel joy then I know that my plants won't feel joy because I won't, like I mentioned, I won't care for them as much. And I'm, I'm really a believer of, you know, the vibrations that you put out. So, and I really feel like, even if you're thinking of it in a rational sense, when you're feeling good about a plant, you'll do more for the plant and you'll be willing to, to go through any difficult times for the plant. And or it doesn't have to be a plant, it could be in anything. Like if you really love it and if you really have joy for it, then you'll be more willing to put your effort and energy into it to, to in, in case of a plant, to help it grow and flourish. So with the Angela, the care was constantly like, I was constantly on edge about, is this happening right? Am I doing it right? Am I watering it right? Even though she wasn't really crisping up or anything, like her positioning, positioning that plant in my home was like, a scientific effort so the white star left now the white star left because why did she leave <laughs> i think it's just one that i kept moving her so i moved her to the living room and then i moved her to different areas it's just i think i don't know if it's the the growth pattern and she's just tall and I, maybe i like some things that are more bushy i feel like maybe if there was i had like a wider a bigger one of it like a bigger wider pot of it and it's nice and full and, and wide maybe it's almost like a, f a space filler for me so it just wasn't fitting right so i let it go and this is what i mean and that's that's the kind of thing that would be on my mind like it just wasn't fitting right wherever i'd move it it just didn't feel right it wasn't dying but then that's another one it wasn't putting out a lot of leaves and a, most if not all the plants i've had have always had like continuous growth and it's not to say oh you know all my plants should have continuous growth but growth but if all of them are growing and then this one plant isn't you have to or i have to feel like okay there's something i'm not doing right for this plant and there's a point where i decided that you know i'm okay to let her go like to, to someone else's care to the universe to the earth <laughs> so that's why she went okay and the next one the Zabrina, oh my gosh, boo, I know. The Zabrina is like such a beautiful plant, but the reason I let that go again, I think it's just the amount of mental 
like I'm always thinking about the care of it every day that was getting um, misted. Granted, if you have a humidifier and you want to use it on your plants, it probably would help. But um, I did enjoy taking care of it myself in terms of maintaining the moisture around it manually, like with misting it. And but that's I wondered. I at times I wondered whether it was taking away from the walls of this yard because they're sort of close in in not exact appearance but they both have these like velvety leaves although the water we see out is so much more velvety um yeah it's it's actually one that i'm thinking about <laughs> but no that particular one has gone now to a much better place i think maranta lucinora the green one um that one grew well but when i looked at it it's for me I have not seen any uh, Lucinora the green one that grows higher that it seems to remain low-lying and that's absolutely fine and when I have an outside garden because right now I don't I imagine that that would do well like in the shaded spot outside like I can I can see how that would work so beautifully I've, I've never tried it and I don't know if that's something that already happens but these things grow out in in nature and on the ground and that's really that's a lot of what the lucinora the both sorry the marantas both of them the striped one and the green one that you saw i felt like they were for low lying it, whenever i moved the red striped one in different positions it always seemed better on the floor either underneath my thematophyllum bagnifidum or or under it it just seemed better below a plant and that's really why i let go of the green one just because um, of its growth habit. Even though I liked her, I do see her in my future, distant future, maybe in a garden, but for now I'm at peace that I let her go. The Monstera Deliciosa, the one I had when the cuttings, because I know what I do want is a big leafed Monstera Deliciosa, and I think I just jumped the gun in trying to buy one that wasn't exactly the right size, it wasn't exactly what I wanted. I'm okay with letting go of that particular Monstera, but don't be surprised if you see a Monstera in my collection because, um, yeah, it's just not the right one. That one that I let go just wasn't the right one. And so we have my two, um, my other two babies. This one, this one was a toughie. It's the one that's still in progress, like it hadn't reached its potential. And it's just living its life. I mean, it's healthy, it's growing out. So this, is, this one's a toughie. And with the Beherensis, gorgeous plant but again um, just not the right size although it's a nice big plant and looking at it it's it's a toughie the Beherensis is growing this one is a plant that I know that I will have in my life at some point as a bigger version um, but maybe just not now So the Rojo Congo stayed um, and I'm looking at it now and it just is so beautiful and it, it's in the light right now it's looking so amazing like in the sun and I'm so glad I kept it because really I had no real good reason to let it go apart from I was feeling like I just needed to be free of some plants. Um, I don't know if you ever have that feeling where you're not exactly overwhelmed because as you saw all these plants were healthy and I was taking care of them and actually with the Calathea I think part of me keeping them was you know here are these plants that are notoriously difficult to care for but hey I'm taking care of them and they're doing well look at me you know there's also that ego thing there all of them are beautiful plants like oh my gosh just the the Sabrina just adore and um, yeah, I adore that. The Maranta stripe, the red striped Maranta, just there's something about that plant. I don't know. Do you know, I've seen other YouTubers who always find the Maranta, the striped Maranta difficult to let go. And I don't know what it is. Like, <laughs> it just keeps calling me, but it's gone now. So clearly it wasn't that, it wasn't that um, beguiling. And the White Star, all amazing plants. But having let go of them, I actually feel so much better i don't think about the plants that are left um i just get up and they're there and i'm here and we interact and we water and yeah it's just i love that and i wanted to do this video because 
you know, letting go of plants can be difficult, especially, I mean, I don't have a huge collection. There are people with like hundreds and hundreds of plant and plants and sometimes it can get overwhelming and, you know, you get to this point where you've had them for so long and you don't know how to let go. Um, so maybe you can do like a step system like I did. So just bring, separate the ones that have you thinking that, oh, something's not quite right. Don't, you don't have to get rid of them. You can just separate them and see how, how your room feels. How your environment feels and that's what i did like moving them away from their positions allowed me to see the space around and and feel the space around and that's really how i was able to let go because sometimes we because we're so stuck in this zone of so many plants you can't imagine remember or you can't imagine or feel what it would be like to let go of a few of them and to be honest having let go of those it hasn't really made so much of a an impact in terms of how things look but the slight changes have really given um, me a, a sense of space and a sense of peace and and freedom and just joy again to just enjoy and not have to think too much about the plants the ones I do still have calathea in my in my um, in my care and they still have the same requ the same requirements in terms of everyday management but I'm at peace with that because it brings me joy and it doesn't seem like such a, a chore. And by the way, when you let go of plants, try to do it in a way that makes you feel good. Either giving them away, selling them, composting them, um, or whatever, whatever makes you feel good will be better for you. So then when, you, when you're thinking about how you let go, you won't be having a sense of guilt over letting them go. Just let them go in a way that pleases you and gives you peace. So um, for me, usually it's either giving them away or composting. Um, those are the two main um, ways of giving, of letting go that make me feel at peace. So I am going to leave you, leave you with the video just showing the before and after of my space. I was able to bring back into my, living, my main living space one of the big plants um, that really deserved a much brighter spot. And I'm able to do that now and move things around more freely because there is that added space and I still have negative space that I look at so um, yeah I'm waffling now so let's cut to the rest of the video okay so confession time <laughs> there is you could probably already guess but in the in the plants that I did let go there was a plant that I've been missing since I think it's been uh, a couple of weeks or so since I did that decluttering and I have to say I repurchased this one plant <laughs> it's not here yet I was hoping it would arrive before then so I could show you which one it is but um, there is one plant out of the out of the few that you saw me let go of that I repurchased and I will post it on Instagram which one that is but maybe comment below if you think you know which one that is um, and I'll also remember to link it to my next video so people on YouTube you can see which one I bought again do I feel guilty for it absolutely not like for my mental state I was I'm happy and I'm still happy that I released them even if it was to show me during those one or two weeks that actually you know I do want this particular plant back in my life um, so yeah stay tuned to see what plant that is and roll on to the before and after of my rooms bye <laughs>